My name is Emily. I'm 30 years old and recently I've been able to enjoy the benefits of technology by working from home. My husband, John, and I have been married for two years now. Actually, last year, we were able to acquire a house with a spacious yard, which has been a long-term dream for both of us. Although we have monthly mortgage payments, we have been building a peaceful life together with mutual support. Our wish was to have three children in the future and create a bright and joyful home together with them. Amidst all this, John suddenly came up with an unexpected proposition. I'm kind of in a bind. I've been thinking about living here together with my father, mother, and also my younger sister. What do you think? Actually, it's been my dream since I was a child to live under one roof as a big family. When I talked about this dream with my mom, she also expressed a strong desire for it. Wait a minute, John. How can you consult with your mom before making such an important decision with me? That's completely out of order. This unexpected proposal to live together left me in a state of surprise and confusion, finding it difficult to put my thoughts into words. John deeply respects his mother, and there is a strong tendency in his personality to prioritize her thoughts and wishes over mine. Currently, our house is filled with furniture and appliances generously given by my mother-in-law's presents, taking up significant space. Some of these items are slightly different from my taste and style, but feeling it would be rude to complain about gifts given out of kindness, I have gratefully accepted them. At times, I couldn't help but wonder if my mother-in-law had subtly chosen these items, considering a future where we all live together under her preferred style and design. When it comes to the idea of living together, the presence of my sister-in-law, Jessica, is a particular concern. She's 25, five years younger than me, and from what I've heard, she has been enjoying a leisurely life at home without a job since dropping out of college. Perhaps because she has been doted on and spoiled since childhood. Even her parents seem to be having a hard time dealing with her now. Especially, she has a weakness for branded goods, acquiring new bags, wallets, and clothes almost every month. I've heard my father-in-law express his dissatisfaction about her frequent splurging several times. Considering she's not working now, it's likely that her living expenses and funds for her extravagant lifestyle are provided by her parents' support. Living together with such people brings a heavy anxiety to my heart. I want to avoid, from the bottom of my heart, disturbing the quiet and peaceful daily life we currently enjoy by our own choice. Could I take some time to think carefully about living together? I've just gotten used to working from home here. Plus, I think there will inevitably be more moments where we have to be considerate of each other if we live under the same roof. For the sake of maintaining a good relationship, I feel it's important to cherish each other's space. I tried to seek understanding and empathy from John, but his reaction was contrary to my expectations. Instead, he showed his dissatisfaction and anger at the idea of rejecting a life together with his family. To be honest, I've been concerned about this for a while. How about trying to be a bit more flexible? I don't think it's a big deal just because a family of three is going to be added. And besides, Jessica is likely to get married and move out in the future. Right? I've heard she's already dating someone. Having my mom's support when we become parents could be a big advantage. When you think about it calmly, the benefits seem to stand out, don't you think? Usually, when our conversation takes this turn, I know from past experience that it's extremely difficult to change his way of thinking. I feel he is the one lacking flexibility in his thoughts. And I wish he would reassess the original purpose and significance of buying this house. However, without picking up on my feelings, John continued to speak. You secured a room for your work, right? And, I haven't told my family that you're working from home. They completely think you're a full-time housewife, ha <laughs> ha. For daily chores like cleaning, cooking, and laundry, if we split the tasks, neither of us should feel burdened, right? Honestly, living with my mother in this house has already been decided. That's the basis we're proceeding from. So, I think we no longer need your input on this. John. I feel that your thinking is really autocratic. Feeling a chill in his words, frustration welled up inside me, but I couldn't help responding. Spending the majority of my day working, coming home exhausted, and then being introduced as a mere housewife in front of his family. It's as if he's completely ignoring the fact that my effort and income are supporting this house. There's no way we could afford such a fine house on his income alone. The house loan was approved because of my stable income. Does he even understand that? Nonetheless, introducing me publicly as a housewife is just unacceptable. I decided to hold back the swirling emotions inside me and get through the situation. 
I wasn't informed about any specific plans for living together or which rooms his family would use. However, the next day, my premonition came true, and I received a message from my mother-in-law. Emily, I've heard about it from John. Thank you so much for warmly welcoming us to live together. Sorry for bringing this up so suddenly. Actually, John told me we could start moving in any time, and after giving it some thought, we've decided to move out from our current place and join you next week. Hearing her cheerful and bright voice left me speechless. I felt my patience reaching its limit, but realizing that I would have to spend a long time with them in the future, I decided to endure it for now and took a deep breath to calm myself down. Shortly after, just a week later on a sunny weekday noon, my in-laws showed up at our house along with a moving truck. Especially, my sister-in-law Jessica seemed to be filled with bright expectations for her new life and house. I never thought I'd get to live in such an amazing house. It turns out, my brother is making a good income, isn't he? I totally didn't notice that. Emily, you've really grabbed a fantastic life. Marrying such a reliable and considerate brother and getting to spend relaxed, carefree time without being chased by household chores. I hope to experience such a blissful daily life myself someday. I couldn't immediately grasp her intentions, but to express her expectations and requests to me in such words. I thought to myself, I didn't foresee this situation. Furthermore, her misunderstanding that I am a full-time housewife. From her tone, it was clear that she was expecting me to take on a lot of the household chores. And my premonition was spot on. My mother-in-law continued speaking. From now on, I'm expecting Emily to support us with the daily chores around the house. At the very least, I'd like her to take care of regular cleaning, laundry, and preparing our meals. Also, I'm feeling a bit tired right now. So could you make me a cup of tea for a break? It would be nice if you could also prepare some Japanese-style sweets for us to have with the tea. Hearing this, I felt a surge of surprise and the pressure of her expectations weighing down on me. I hadn't thought it would come to this, but was I expecting something like this? I pondered deeply. As for my father-in-law, he's always been a reserved man, rarely showing his emotions. However, while I was boiling water in the kitchen, he quietly approached me and awkwardly started to talk. It really feels uncomfortable to start living together like this. I truly feel sorry. If there's anything I can help with, like gardening or cleaning the entrance, please don't hesitate to tell me. Actually, I've mainly been responsible for cleaning the entrance, bathroom, and toilet in our house. He shared this with a bit of embarrassment. With an apologetic look, my father-in-law quietly uttered these words. On the other hand, in the evening of the same day, when John returned home from work, his mood seemed brighter than I had ever seen before, which made me feel like something special had happened. Dad, Mom, and Jessica, really, thank you all. I never imagined that we'd all be able to live together like this. A new life starts from today. I'm genuinely happy and looking forward to it. Feel free to choose any room you like. And I'm considering asking Emily to help with the household chores. By the way, since tonight is a special day for the whole family to spend together, we should celebrate. Oh, that's right. There was a delicious cake shop nearby, wasn't there? I'll go buy a cake from there. In response to John's words and vigor, Especially my mother-in-law and Jessica's faces lit up. John is such a kind-hearted child, truly caring for his family. He's so happy that we're here, unlike someone else. Laughing, Jessica said, Come on, mom, don't tease dad too much. While mother-in-law and Jessica were having a cheerful conversation, I found myself pondering about the future household duties awaiting me. I felt the need to plan ahead and make the roles and responsibilities clear to everyone. Everyone, I have something to say. There's something important I need to share with you all. Currently, I'm working full-time from home, and during the day, I'm actually on a very tight schedule. So, I intend to manage dinner preparations and other chores systematically. However, I would appreciate some help with the other household chores, such as laundry and cleaning. There might be times when work keeps me occupied until late at night, and I hope for your understanding during those times. I wanted to be honest about my situation and workload, but mother-in-law and Jessica reacted just as I expected. Wow, mom, can you believe it? There are actually people working from home in this advanced age. I'm a bit shocked. But pushing household chores onto others just because of work? <laughs> I don't know how much she earns, but calling that a real job is a bit. <laughs> oh my, really? Emily, you're saying something funny here. 
In my circles, I've never heard of anyone being too busy due to work from home. Besides, you probably earn only about $100 or $200 a month from such a job, right? Well, considering Emily's efforts, maybe even less. I can't believe you'd use such a reason as an excuse to avoid household chores. The moment I heard those words, they pointed at me and laughed loudly. I had anticipated this, but facing such a reaction in reality made me feel quite uncomfortable. Furthermore, I thought it was a bit outdated to think that work from home is uncommon in today's world. Later on, as John came in holding a delicious looking cake loaded with fruits, mother-in-law approached him. Hey, Emily just said she's too busy with her work from home to help us out at all. I was a bit surprised. I never thought a new bride would think this way about her family. However, I was confident. I believed that John understood my real income and workload, so he wouldn't blame me. But his reaction was vastly different from what I had expected. Emily really is something else. She can't be considerate at all. And yet, she always relies on me despite not earning much. She talks big and confidently. But I was expecting her to help with the household chores just like my mom does. I decided to live together, expecting that from her. But to see her trying to neglect even a part of the household chores, even though we've just gotten married, is just unacceptable. I was taken aback by his statement. The mother-in-law and sister-in-law were nodding along, creating an atmosphere in the room as if they were the righteous ones. I sighed deeply, feeling depressed about the prospect of living with this family day in and day out. Meanwhile, the father-in-law quietly finished his meal and returned to his room without a word. In the living room afterwards, the three of them mother-in-law, sister-in-law, and John were enjoying their drinks and having a great time. Hey housemaid, the alcohol is running low, so I need you to get some more. And we're running out of snacks too, so make something that doesn't take much effort. Hurry up, and if you can't get it ready quickly, run to the nearby convenience store and buy something. He said this with a smile while enjoying his drink with the other two. The thought of such days continuing made me feel utterly exhausted. And at that moment, the option of divorce clearly appeared in my mind. A few hours later, as the night deepened, John, who seemed to not handle alcohol well, was lying on the living room sofa, completely asleep. However, the mother-in-law and sister-in-law were happily chatting away, and it seemed difficult to predict when their conversation would end. Amidst all this, I reached out to tidy up the empty plates and glasses. I'm thinking of tidying up around here a bit. I'll start with the used plates, so let me know if you need anything. Upon hearing this, the mother-in-law turned towards me, her interest peaked, and asked, By the way, Emily, the work-from-home job you're doing, does it bring in a considerable income? John mentioned it briefly earlier, but he didn't go into details. Despite being our daughter-in-law, are you actually earning a six-figure salary? If that's really the case, could you maybe share a bit of your blessings with us? Behind those words, I could sense a hint of them scheming something for my income. Just thinking about what would happen if they found out my exact salary and earnings terrified me. Ha, huh, six figures. There's no way I could earn that much. Where did you hear such a thing? In reality, you don't actually believe I earn that much, do you? Certainly, that's true. The mother-in-law said, smiling and turning towards Emily. Emily, I'm sorry. It seems like I misunderstood your living situation a bit. But to be honest, I thought you might be struggling a bit financially. Her eyes sparkled as she spoke, suggesting an underlying motive in her words. So I'm curious, how much do you make a month? She asked with great interest. Is it around $900? Or is it more, maybe close to $1,800? Slightly surprised, Emily responded. No, actually, I only make about $720. I forced a weak smile as I spoke. Still, this is an income from working at home. I decided to assert herself and added, Actually, as you both mentioned before, work from home jobs are now to common, and I can't really expect to earn much from them, can I? I continued the conversation half jokingly, deciding it was not wise to reveal her true income to her mother in law and sister in law. However, as soon as Emily mentioned the $720 income, both the mother in law and sister in law burst into laughter. Snickering, Jessica said, That's what I told you, didn't I? I think work-from-home jobs are outdated now. So, it's hard to expect a high income from that. She continued, revealing more. Actually, John exaggerated a bit under the influence of alcohol and said he was earning in the six figures. Finally, she confessed. You know, John has always been a bit weak with numbers. Back in school, he always struggled with math tests, and as a result, he often had to take remedial classes. Internally, 
I desperately wanted to know exactly how much information John had shared. However, given the current situation, a calm and rational decision was necessary to avoid worsening my position. Suddenly, my mother-in-law stood up and brought a heavy-looking suitcase from her bedroom. I couldn't predict what was about to happen next. Her expression was very stern as she looked at me coldly and said, You are not fulfilling your duties as a daughter-in-law in this house. Then, she continued more harshly, With such a low income, do you really think you are a suitable wife for our family? Or do you already realize that you should leave this house immediately? I was frozen on the spot. This was completely unexpected, and I had no idea what to say. While wondering why she was doing this, I managed to open my mouth. Mother-in-law, please wait a moment. This is mine and John's house. So why should I be the one to leave? As I asked her this, John, who had been deeply asleep until a short while ago, slowly began to regain consciousness and started to speak. Rubbing his eyes and trying to shake off the sleepiness, he said, Why are you going against what my mother says? I've told you many times not to go against her. He looked at me with a cold gaze and said with a faint smile, If you intend to cause problems, perhaps it's best if you leave this house promptly, right? His words were unexpected, and my heart was suddenly engulfed by a cold feeling. That's it. I don't need to be involved with this family anymore. I'll leave this place on my own feet. No matter what happens, I won't reach out to them again. Be prepared for that. I repeated this to myself in my mind. Understood. I will leave the room, so please give me a moment. I answered calmly while starting to pack my belongings. Watching this, my mother-in-law and sister-in-law wore clear expressions of satisfaction on their faces. This is unexpected. I thought it would take at least three months, or even a year. But she's leaving so soon. I'm sure once John fully wakes up and grasps the situation, he'll feel the same way we do. She proudly declared these words, making sure to speak loudly enough for me to hear and understand her true feelings. This revealed their premeditated intention to drive me out of the house. That very day, I left the house and returned to my parents' home. I told them that I would move out as soon as I found a new place and that I was going to divorce John. Initially, they were shocked, but after I explained the situation, my dad said, Divorcing him is the right decision. You don't need a husband or a family like that. Well, my mother-in-law spoke arrogantly, but I knew it was only a matter of time before she would come crying to me. I was sure I'd hear from her within a month at the latest. Sure enough, just one week after the divorce was finalized, my phone rang. It was my ex-mother-in-law calling incessantly. Hey, what's going on? The monthly mortgage payment for this house is $3,000. I just looked at John's pay stub, and it says his take-home pay is only $1,300. What's the meaning of this? I thought to myself, she's finally realized it. But of course, I had no intention of helping her or my ex-in-laws at this point. Mother-in-law, it seems you weren't fully aware of everything, were you? I thought you would know at least the basic facts since I was the one leaving the house. Did you know? John's actual take-home pay is only $1,300. And not only that, but he also has a serious debt problem. There was a time when he got deeply into gambling, and he still has debts from that period. The monthly repayment is $1,000. I've been shouldering this burden and repaying his debts all this time. I thoroughly explained to my ex-mother-in-law how much I had supported John financially during our marriage and how much I had struggled because of his debts. When we proceeded with the divorce, we had put in writing our agreement regarding the repayment of debts and loans incurred during our marriage, and both parties had signed it. I had anticipated that the situation might develop this way, which is why I had taken precautions in advance. I could see her expression growing darker as she listened. But, such a large amount of money, we just can't afford to pay it back. Not just the monthly mortgage payments, but also our daily lives are just getting by. What should we do? Emily, you might not know about this, but Jessica has a serious debt problem. We, your father-in-law and I, have secretly been shouldering this huge debt for her. Actually, it's expected to take more than 10 years to repay it. Desperation was seeping into her voice. Faced with her teary eyes right in front of me, I resolved myself and asked, What happened? Taking a deep breath, she began to speak. It was a grave mistake made by Jessica in the past. She got involved in an inappropriate relationship with a married man. And as a result, she was repeatedly asked to pay a hefty compensation by the man's wife. To my further surprise, this happened three times in total, leading to a debt of around $90,000. Deciding that we couldn't leave her alone any longer, our family made the decision to bring her back home. And that was the background of the whole situation. She looked into my eyes again and earnestly pleaded, 
Please help us. We apologize for all the mistakes we've made so far. If John wishes to understand how you feel and wants to live together again, I hope you can support him in doing that. Please, would you consider it? Amidst my shock and confusion, I managed to respond. Mother-in-law, are you all right? If you are under a lot of mental strain, I can refer you to a professional. Please think about this calmly. Do you think, after being driven out once, I would just come back to fix your financial troubles? Don't you think that's a rather unusual expectation? It seems somewhat disconnected from reality. I understand that you are in trouble, but shouldn't you be considering options like working hard, consulting relatives or acquaintances, or even selling your house or belongings if necessary? Asking me, with whom you no longer have any connection, for help seems a bit too convenient, don't you think? Honestly, do not expect any financial support from me. I would appreciate it if you could stop contacting me from this point on. Goodbye. I stated firmly and hung up the phone. As you know, my mother-in-law is quite persistent, so the phone kept ringing incessantly afterward. Annoyed by her relentless calls, I eventually set my phone to reject all incoming calls. Apologies from John and Jessica also came flooding in, but I ignored all of them and blocked their contacts. And then, to send a message, I sent a photo of myself enjoying a beautiful night view from the top floor of my new luxurious apartment, glass of wine in hand, along with a message to John. I firmly believe that both John and his family should face the consequences for continuously underestimating me.